I grew up on a, on a farm in, uh, in central Wisconsin and uh, it was kind of a smaller farm. We, uh, we had a couple of sheep. The cool thing about growing up there is that I had a lot of uh, freedom to explore stuff like in, uh, in my garage and in, uh, in the barn and out in the woods. And uh, my parents were really encouraging of uh, these kind of projects and uh, they would help to get resources. Like my dad was a, uh, a soil scientist, so he had access to a lot of chemicals in his, in his laboratory and he like brought me into the lab and he would, uh, you know, show me cool experiments and that got me interested in science and engineering and uh, it's, it's hard to uh, kind of understand what an engineer does at, at that uh, young age so coming here and being exposed to all the different majors and doing a lot of introductory programs and a lot of inter introductory classes I kind of came to realize that making things is what I wanted to do and engineering was the best way for me to do that here so uh, I think I, first I wanted to make things and secondary I wanted to be an engineer. My approach uh, towards uh, projects and research in general is to do a lot of small projects in parallel and then kind of use those projects as a, a means to do some larger projects uh, as well. But it's certainly satisfying to uh, have a kind of a, I feel like a breakthrough on, on a project like this. Like I think one of the most satisfying feelings I had was actually getting this uh, vibration actuation uh, technique to work. Uh, in the lab because the first time I got it working I had no idea how it worked I just know that it was working and then I tried to actually figure out why it was working and it was really confusing because it was like the opposite way of what I imagined uh, but that was a, uh, another uh, just a great moment because uh, I, would, I sort of realized that I would never had come up with that idea if I hadn't kind of played around a lot with it uh, not really knowing what I was doing uh. so this concept is a little tricky so I made this little prototype here of a single screw moving within the big array to kind of show how this vibration can cause a single screw to rotate. It starts rotating. And if I go below that uh, critical frequency, it stops rotating. It has a lot of promise for making a really uh, high resolution uh, reconfigurable surface made of these small screws. Uh, if, if you try an idea and it fails the first time, that's not bad news, that's good news, and you can, but make sure you understand why it failed and so you can do it better the next time. Like when I was in high school, it was really hard to see how, how calculus or you know, science was really applicable to anything that I was actually doing in my day-to-day -day life. And it was only when I started doing these more interesting projects uh, I started realizing that, oh yeah, I can use trigonometry to calculate the angle that these mirrors go and actually make this device. And uh, realizing that was a, a big thing for me. It just like opens up a lot of like tools in your toolbox if you have all that uh, education in you know, math and science and you can use a lot more things than you would have been able to otherwise. 